water treatment plant. Uh, my name is Bud Dimmick. I'm the water and wastewater superintendent. And this is the lead operator, Stevie Osborne, and she'll be giving you a tour of the water plant today. Thank you. Over here at our main screen. Um, this is our main screen. This holds all of our SCADA and everything on it. This gives us all of the information that we need to know when we're running the facility. So we have our springs and we can check our flow here and our wells in the flow here when we're running both. Um, then we come down and this right here, NTU, what that stands for is, it's a shortened version of a long word that stands for small particles in your water. So we're checking to see how dirty the water is when it comes into us. So right now we're at a 3.03. .03. That's really low, especially considering we're in the summertime. Um, sometimes that can jump up to over a two. Um, once it gets to about a two, 2.5, that's when our filters start working pretty hard. So we're pretty happy when it is a 0.03. .03. That's typically our spring NTU. And then we go over and we have our gallons per minute coming into the facility. And then we have our four filters. We have filter one, two, three, and four. Filter one is offline right now. That's why it's flashing. We're not using it. We're using filter two, three, and four. And if you look here, it says step. When it's in step six, what that means is that it's 100% gravity flow into the facility. So we're not using any pumps or anything to bring any water in. And we're, the water going into the filters is 100% gravity. Then we have our delta P's. And what delta P stands for is how much pressure does it take to push that water through our screens and the perlite that we put on there. Then we have our filter run times. Right now, filter two is at 331. Filter three is at 259, and filter four has been running for 547 hours. So that's really fantastic. We don't typically get that kind of flow rate or run time um, in the summer, but with the restrictions and everything going on and the work out of the springs, um, everything is kind of slowed down for us, which is ideal because then that gives us time to get things up and running. Um, then we keep an eye on the turbidity at each filter and we have our flows out of each filter. So when we're looking to see if a filter needs to be cleaned, um, we'll check the delta P's, we'll check the filter run times and the turbidity, and then we also check the valve opening. Um, and that those are kind of our indicators. Here's the valve openings here. Those are our indicators for if we need to clean a filter or not. Um, then we, after everything goes through the filter, it goes up to our clear wells. Right before it goes to our clear well, it's injected with gas chlorine. So we use gas chlorine because it's 100% chlorine. We don't have to mix it or anything. We know exactly what's going in every time. Then we have our turbidity leaving the facility. That's a 0 0.02. Um, so that's after it's ran through our, our filters. Um, then we keep an eye on our chlorine residual. Um, right now it's at a 1.08. We like to keep it between 1.05 to about a 1.15. Um, that lets us know that we have enough chlorine in the water. So then we also keep an eye on our pH and our degrees in Celsius. So typically when um, we're running 100% spring water, our pH is always 7.5 and it doesn't move from that. Um, and right now it's an 8.1. That's because we've got the wells on so that um, Different sources change different things. So our temperature actually has came up due to the wells and our pH has came up due to the wells. We do not treat for that in this facility. Um, we can and will when we're in the pretreatment, but not in this facility. Um, and I guess for those of you who don't know pH, it's a scale from one to 14, seven is neutral. Um, one to one, the lower ones are the base and the higher ones are the or no, that's a lie. <laughs> Acid is low, base is high. So you want to stay within that seven range um, between, you know, between six and eight is kind of ideal. Um, and then we have right outside of the facility here, once it leaves the clear well, it splits into two separate lines and we have our low pressure and our high pressure. 
So this here is our high pressure side. That's Painted Hills and Hospital Tank. Painted Hills is 3 million gallons. Hospital Tank holds 1 million gallons. So Painted Hills is the large water tank um, that you can see sitting on the hill when you're headed to Casper on 287. Hospital is the one that's right behind the hospital up on the hill. And then we have our low pressure side and that's Tank Farm. Those each hold 7.5 million gallons. Um, and those are the ones that you can see when you're coming in and out of, headed into town or out of town. And then we also supply the town of Sinclair. Their tank is a half a million gallons. Um, doo -doo 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 -doo. Not a lot else for that. We can check a few different things. Um, we can kind of take a look at our wastewater plant and how those pumps and things are acting. Um, we control the river pump uh, from the North Platte if we want to send it to the golf course or if they are end up here or not, we can do that from here. Um, a few different things. So we just kind of, this is our, our headquarters and gives us all the information we need. Um, and then if you look over here, this is kind of, it's a bit older, <laughs> but it's the life saver. This shows us filter one, filter two, filter three, and filter four. Um, and every light that you see is on is a valve that's open. We use air valves to open and close our valve, or air to open and close our valves. Um, so with this switchboard, if something's acting up, we notice it on the computer or back in the filters, we can come up here and we can manipulate them by hand, open and close them if we need to. Um, if it says it's open in here, but we go back there and look and it's closed, we know something's kind of wonky and we need to work on it. So this thing has saved our lives and we don't ever want to get rid of it. Um, it's, it's ideal, that's for sure. Um, and then like I was saying, these are our flow, our flows for each filter and our valve opening. So if these valves open up to 99%, we know that that filter needs to be clean. Um, because this is the percentage that the valve is open to allow the water flow through. And if that opens all the way, then we know our Delta P's or it's not getting the flow that it needs. So it's a good cleaning indicator. Um, and then just kind of to backtrack a little bit, typically I would say this in the beginning, but I'm not good at, I've never done a video tour before. <laughs> um, our, for the city of Rollins, our water sources, we have the springs that everybody knows that we're working on right now. Um, and what those are, we have spring boxes, they're big concrete boxes, and we have what's called perforated pipe. And what that is, is it's pipe with holes in it and we lay it right on top of the bedrock. And then all of the snow melt in the rainfall goes through the ground, gets filtered through the ground and gets caught in our perforated pipe. Then that water goes to our structures, our spring boxes. And some of our spring boxes have only two inlets. Some of them have up to six. And then they catch there and they go to our main line. And from the main line, they go to our main spring box where everything collects before it takes the trip into town. Um, that's the ideal water source. That's why we're um, trying so hard to rehab it. It's the cleanest, it's the most consistent, it's the best water that the city has. Um, then we have our three wells. Those are artesian. What artesian means is that you punch the ground, that water has its own pressure, so it comes up without any pumps or anything. So we don't need any pumps to pull the water from the springs, that's 100% gravity fed. From the wells, that's 100% gravity fed. So we're saving money by um, kind of being lucky that we have really good sources that can carry itself all the way to us. Um, then we also have the river. We have rights to the river and we can pull from there. Um, that, one's a, that one we typically like to use for irrigation because it is a higher turbidity in these filter systems, they can't handle that. Um, unless we get the pre-treatment up and running. Um, then we also have our three reservoirs, which I'll show you when we go out into the hallway. Um, K is the hallway. <laughs> <laughs> I guess a fun fact is the city of Rollins was actually treating our wastewater before we ever started treating our, our drinking water. So the wastewater was built in 1979 and the water treatment was built in 1984. And that was due to, you know, the government said we have to chlorinate and clean our water so people don't get viruses and bacteria from it. But 
um, from the springs, that's very unlikely. Okay, so these are our three reservoirs here. Um, this one here, this is Rollins Reservoir. It's the one that is all the way out south um, next to our springs. So if you look, um, right here is our main spring box. And that's where everything collects into that main spring box. And then it takes its trip all the way to Rollins to our facility. We have spring boxes all behind here. This is actually the area that they're doing the work. The first phase of the spring rehab is running through here. Um, so we're replacing all of the wood stave pipe that we have in the ground. At this time right now, we have seven miles worth of wood stave pipe that's uh, over a little over 105 years old um, that's in use. So we're gonna replace that. Um, and then we have a ton, we have a few spring boxes back over this way and it comes through and collects into the main box and comes in. Um, with this reservoir, we cannot put water into it. So we can't put river water into it. We can't put wells water into it. We can't fill this one. This reservoir is 100% filled by snow runoff and uh, rain. So then we have our other two. This is Peking Reservoir and this is Atlantic Rim. Peking Reservoir is right behind our treatment plant. Our treatment plant is right here. Peking Reservoir is right here. It's one of our better, um, it's, it's our favorite reservoir if we're being honest. Um, so with these two, we can actually, we can fill these with river water, well water, spring water. Um, we can fill these ones if we need to. With Atlantic Rim, it's still, it's just out south. It's off to the right when you're headed out. Um, we are filling this one with river water right now. Uh, but typically we try to fill both in the winter time with spring water, which usually we can, we can get both of them full with spring water. So they're pretty good. These reservoirs are all open to the environment. So there is sand and there is you know, wildlife that gets into them. So when we do in the summer pull from our reservoirs, it does change our waters, the, the taste and the smell, things like that. Along with the wells, when we turn the wells on, that'll change the consistency of our water also. In the winter time, you guys are used to pretty hard water because it's, you know, pretty, it's pretty consistent. It's filtered through the ground. It, and then in the summer when we start pulling from the reservoirs and things, everybody starts asking questions. It's because these are open to the environment and, and we don't in this facility treat for taste and odor, odor problems. Um, we could do that in the pretreatment, but at this time, um, right, not right now. So we can make it to the filter bay if you would like. It's a little bit louder in here, so I'll do the best that I can to um, make it to where you guys can hear me. Okay, so these are our filters here. Um, we've got filter one, two, three, and four. And like I said, we're running three of them right now. Typically, in the winter time, we're only running about two at a time. We'll take the other ones offline. We'll pull them out where pressure wash them, get them cleaned up. Then we'll switch and do the next two. In the summertime, on a regular summer, um, without restrictions, We'll run all four, all day, all night, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Um, unless it needs to be cleaned, we'll take it down for cleaning, put it back online, and they're running constantly. Um, in the winter, our facility, what town typically calls for, is about a million gallons a day. In the summer, that jumps up to about six million gallons a day, and you know, mostly irrigation and things like that. Um, so each one of these filters can do about 2 million gallons a day, ideally. Um, and then also, when this facility was built, they only had one, two, and three. Filter four was put in later. They expanded the building, and so if you look, filter three and filter four are slightly different. Um, we've got bolts to keep one, two, and three closed. Filter four is a little more automated because it was a late summer. So if you guys want to take a look inside of one of our filters, we can do that. Um, and then, uh, oh, I forgot the throw light. I'm gonna have to oh. that. All right. 
So this is the inside of one of our filters. And each one of our filters has about, oh, oh, that's long enough. Each one of our filters has about 34 to 36 stainless steel screens in them. A few of them, we keep a few of them out so that in the winter we can fly them in there and clean things out. Um, our sluice bars and things like that. Um, and then if you guys see the white that is on there, I forgot to tell you this, I usually say this in the beginning, but that's what we call perlite. And it's crushed up volcanic rock. We get it from the Troma County here in Wyoming. And we use that as a filter. It's a, it's a media. So we mix it up with water um, and we do it two different ways. We do uh, a pre-coat and that's what we put on right after we clean the filter. And we put it on really thick. Then we circulate that and get it all over each one of the screens and then put it back online. And then we have what's called body, and that's a thinner consistency. And that gets, the each one of these filters will get a shot of the body feed every 2,000 gallons that goes through the filter of water. So not any bit of this water that comes through the filter doesn't go through this perlite and then the stainless steel. And then we're constantly building a pillow of that perlite onto the screens until our system tells us, hey, it's time to clean. So um, I'll show you guys some of the perlite. Usually that's like the first thing I do because I get pretty excited about it, but I apologize. <laughs> um, so we'll go this way and take a look. I can show you some of the filtered water. Hopefully it'll show up in a video. Okay, I will say we cannot get in here to clean these. So oh. you'll see like the window stuff, but this is filtered water. Hopefully it doesn't look too bad with the... Ah. Ah. Sorry guys. <laughs> <laughs> but it's pretty clean coming through. I don't know if you can use that, but I yeah. show people. So uh, we will go this way and I'll show you some of our screens and the wood stake pipe. It's pretty cool. Okay, so this is one of the screens out of the filter. Um, as you can see, it's got a mesh on it. And then if Myra wants to bring it here, this is what the inside looks like. Okay, so every bit of water has to be pulled through that perlite and the stainless steel screen and then it collects out of the bottom here, and then it comes out of that blue pipe that I just showed you um, through the little loopy glass, and then it goes over to our clear wall. And then this is the wood stay pipe. And it's, I know a lot of people are upset that we're still using it, but I just think that these men were geniuses um, because it's, it's lasted us this long, and, and we should be grateful for that. Um, it's really quite amazing what they did. 105 years ago, right? Um, it's pretty fantastic. <laughs> so we'll take you to the clear one. If you look right here, that white line going into this pipe. There it is. That's where the chlorine gets injected into our clean filtered water. Oh. And then, this is our clear wall right here. So everything behind this is our filtered water, and then it's got that uh, chlorine in it, in it. And inside of the clear well, we have baffles. So that water has to serpentine through the clear well, so it gets as much contact time as it can with the chlorine so that any viruses or bacteria that might have passed through the filters um, will get killed off and everybody will stay safe. Um, and then we have our chlorine. We can adjust our chlorine here for when we, upper, we turn our flows up or down. We can adjust that here. Then we have our monitoring stuff over here. We have to monitor our chlorine residuals, our turbidity, um, and send that in to EPA. It's regulated to prove that we are doing what we need to to keep um, the townspeople safe. So we're constantly monitoring that. 
um, I guess I should say with the chlorine residual, so we, that's important because once it leaves this facility, there can be leaks or breaks in the line. And if that happens, we need to be sure that we have enough chlorine to kill off anything that could make its way into that line and into your drinking water. So as much as um, I appreciate our springs as clean as they are, and, and we have to be sure that if there's an incident, you guys are at home. Nobody loves chemicals in, in there, anything, but uh, we do it for your safety, and that's why we keep the range that we do so it's not too high or too low. Um, uh, the, 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 we used to actually, uh, years ago, they added fluoride to the water here. Uh, we do not do it any longer. Uh, fluoride is naturally occurring in our water because it is filtered through the ground, which it picks up um, quite a few different things doing that. But uh, our fluoride content is pretty low. It's within that safe range. And I would say for anybody who thinks that they need more fluoride, I would talk to the dentist or get some some fluoride products because uh, not everybody needs it. With some people, it can be pretty detrimental. It can turn your teeth brown, make your bones brittle, and cause a few other problems. So it's best if you if you need fluoride that you maintain that yourself. Um, so let's see. I guess we can go over to our body feed room, or I'll take you upstairs and we'll look inside the body feed room. Oh, cool. that I was telling you about. This is our filter media, and it's that crushed up volcanic rock. So we mix it with the water and to a consistency for the free coat really thick, for the body feed thin. Because like I said, the body feed goes in every 2,000 gallons, so we're constantly building a pillow that every bit of water has to go through. It's pretty cool. So we've got water from the springs filtered through the ground, and then we have Wyoming rock that is being filtered through. And I just love that. So, um, we can head down. I guess I can show you the top of the farewell since we're up here. And this is the top of the farewell. Everything underneath of us, that's, that's our cleaned water. The farewell can hold about 187,000 gallons at a time, but it's constantly moving through. So. That's the old fluoride tank that is no longer in use. Um, we have pumps, that way if we have to get water out of the farewell faster, we can. Um, we've never had to use them at this time. Um, so, go downstairs. And those are the air valves I was telling you about. 
So we use air to open and close the majority, pretty much all of our valves that are in, important to us. <laughs> Bless you, ma'am. Thank you. You're welcome. It actually comes in handy. Some people, they don't really care for that style. For us, um, in the past, our, we lost our system. Uh, the whole thing went down. And so we were able to come out here and manipulate every valve that we needed so we can continue to produce water for town. You guys didn't even know it. <laughs> <laughs> so it's really handy. Like I said, with the switchboard and then the air valves, we can manipulate those by hand so we can continue to do what we need to do. Um, this here, this is our chlorine room. So if you see one, two, three on this side, and then one, two, three on this side, this is side A, this is side B. So we pull from three at a time because if you pull more than 40 pounds of chlorine out in one day, it'll freeze that line and you'll have a leak. So we pull from all three simultaneously, then we'll come in and we'll change them out. Um, like I said earlier, chlorine, gas chlorine, a lot of places have tried to get away from it. Um, it's pretty reliable for us. We know it's 100% concentrate and um, so we can adjust according to that. And we're not having, our operators aren't having to, to mix powders with water and things like that. So we feel it's, it's the best for our system. Um, I guess fun facts are that chlorine is two and a half times heavier than air. So if I were to ingest chlorine and go down, then I would continue to ingest chlorine because it's heavier. So every time we open the door to this, which is it's completely sealed off, it's its own area. There's a locked door that only an operator can open. Um, every time that door opens, there's a fan that sit and low comes on and it won't go off until that door is shut. Well, we don't shut that door until we're out of there. Um, so uh, it comes out as a gas. If there we were to have a leak, it would be a gas leak. If I were to ingest it, it would turn back into a liquid inside of my lungs. And if I ingest enough of it, I could do what's called dry drowning because um, it, it, once it's contained, it turns back into a liquid. Any questions, Myra? Oh, um, my ass. So I've heard that the plant is called a DE plant. Oh, is yeah. that to say another word for perlite? No. It, well, it's it's DE stands for diatomaceous earth, and typically that's um, like a charcoal-based uh, media, whereas we're a perlite. But EPA still classifies us as a DE because um, we're within that same range. Yeah, and then I guess, uh, so a lot of people, there's two plants like this in Wyoming. There's ours, and then there's the one in Mills. And then from what I understand, I haven't been able to find 100% proof. There's only one other facility like this in the United States. So there would be a total of three like this in the United States. Most of them have moved away from it. But we're lucky enough to where if we get that clean, Spring water source that this facility is the most ideal for us because we have such a clean source and a low cost while utilizing it so it's, it's pretty cool it's something to be proud of if you understand the whole process and because some of these other processes can be expensive and they and then there's some of them where they take so much out of the water that they actually have to add minerals back in and things like that where we're lucky enough to where if we can get that spring water we have natural minerals that are, are pretty good for us and if you're the kind of person that doesn't like a certain thing or not well there's personal products you can get for your home um, but as a whole it's a pretty good product that we can send out when we have our springs so it's pretty cool um, but we can we can walk but I should tell you too um, if you're gonna come out for a tour try not to wear heels because we do have the grapes everywhere so it's it's kind of, just so you know. Yeah. <laughs> um, so these filters, the company that built them for us, they're actually the largest that has ever been built. So if you were to go to that company's headquarters, they have photos of our filters <coughs> in their main office um, because they are the largest that they've built. Um, if you guys would like to come out for a tour, we're more than happy to give one. Um, we enjoy questions because sometimes we do our best to have all the answers that you guys need, but sometimes some people ask some questions and it really gets us all thinking and then we get to find the answer and share that with you. So if you do have questions, your thoughts, or opinions, um, 
please just give us a call, come out and tour the place. We're pretty, pretty open to that because the more that we can inform you guys, the better off we all are um, and the better understanding because water is so important to everybody. You need it for life, for everything. Um, everything. If we didn't have water, we would have nothing. Um, and the best understanding is to come and ask us the questions that you have. And like I said, if we don't have the answer, we're more than happy to come and find it for you. Um, and then I know with everything that's happened recently, there's a million questions out there and we're doing our best to get you all the information you guys need. But if you feel that your questions aren't being answered in the way that you appreciate or find right, out, coming out here and giving, letting us explain to you the situations is the ideal way to do it. Um, we have what you need. So when it comes to answers, um, I don't know. Thank you so much for coming on a tour with us. I hope that you enjoyed it and uh, I was understandable. Uh, <laughs> and I hope that you guys really do come and see us soon. I know we had a group of second graders come out and do tours and they had a, a bunch of fun and hopefully we can continue doing that also. Uh, so if we can entertain second graders, we got you too. <laughs> Thank you guys. <laughs>